Hey guys, it's Jamie here with Price Right Sales. Today we're here to do an kind of an informational video. Um, we have a lot of emails and questions uh, uh, and problems with people, you know, blowing their speakers or installing them improperly um, or not hooking them up correctly. And we kind of just want to go over a few basic things to help you guys out to make sure your stereo system is performing uh, the best it possibly can. <laughs> Let's jump into it. So on this table here, um, I have a few different tweeters. I have a mid-range uh, speaker. I have a coaxial speaker. And we're going to kind of talk all about these uh, different things and uh, the type of situations you can run into. So one of our main things is, is people are looking for uh, bigger and better tweeters to add to their systems to get uh, those very high notes and those, you know, make their system as loud as it possibly can be. Um, but in doing so, uh, they're hooking it up to amplifiers uh, sometimes, or maybe just a factory radio. Um, and then uh, a day later, the speaker's blown, and they're like, hey, you know, what happened? What did I do wrong? So um, it's really important uh, to make sure the frequency uh, of the amplifier or radio uh, is adjusted correctly, or make sure you have the correct crossover um, in order to filter out those bad frequencies. So. Here um, is one of our most popular, um, you know, larger tweeters. Uh, it, it's easy to put a door panel because it's thin, so it's really popular for us. Um, this is a bullet style tweeter. Um, it's gonna be very loud, very efficient. Um, it's also a very popular style for us. And then this is kind of the monster of tweeters. I mean, uh, this thing is huge. Um, it's really popular because if you're looking to make your system as loud as you possibly can, uh, I mean, this is the go-to. It's just a lot of times you got to find room to put something of this size. Um, these tweeters uh, operate, uh, you know, typically from 2,000 hertz up to, you know, 20 to 25,000 hertz. And a lot of times when people install them in their systems, they're playing frequencies way below 2,000 hertz. So you're gonna see on all these tweeters that they all come with a yellow capacitor connect, connected to the positive terminal of the speaker. You're gonna see this on all of them. Some of them are gonna be different sizes depending on the size of the tweeter, but they all are serving the same purpose. A lot of people will disconnect these because they're not sure what they are or why, why they're there. And it's really important that you don't do so unless you have other things in your system to accommodate uh, or replace these capacitors. So these capacitors block out lower frequencies at six dBs per octave on average. With saying that, anything you play below the 2000 hertz frequency or thereabouts, depending on the tweeter, is gonna get blocked out so it doesn't damage the voice coil. The, the voice coil in a tweeter does not move up and down a lot like a normal subwoofer or speaker. It's really important to make sure that you always keep this installed. And if you don't have one or not sure if you need to use one, depending on the, the type of tweeter, some tweeters have built in crossovers. Uh, it's really important to ask the, the, the place you buy it from, whether it's us or some other store, uh, they make sure they're very helpful on getting you taken care of and getting you what you need uh, to prevent you know, damaging your tweeters. Using a capacitor like this is kind of the easiest and cheapest way to prevent low frequencies from damaging the tweeter. If you really want uh, to upgrade your system, they, they sell crossovers like this. This particular one is made by AudioPipe. It's a really popular one for us. It's called a CRX203. Um, this is a basic uh, two-channel crossover. So you're gonna have the speaker input, uh, which would normally go directly to your speaker, would go into the first two terminals, which are labeled. And then you're gonna have two output terminals, one for a woofer, which is gonna be like a mid-range or your regular speaker, and the other one's the tweeter. Uh, this is going to filter the frequencies better than a capacitor style filter. That being said, these are typically under $20, so it can be a really good investment, especially if you want your system to sound balanced and make sure you're getting the correct frequencies to each component. So another uh, big issue we have is people running big tweeters like this on their normal car radio. Um, whether it's an aftermarket or factory radio, they don't per 
produce a lot of power. Um, so sometimes, you know, depending on the size of the tweeter, you know, not having enough power can also do damage. But one thing a lot of people don't understand is since it's not enough power, they crank their radio way up. And when cranking, cranking your radio way up, at, at the high end of the radio, say you have a typical radio that goes up to say 40 or 50 on volume, when it gets to about 90 to 95% uh, volume on most radios, they're gonna start to distort. Once you have distortion that's, pr that's produced and sent to the tweeter or speaker, no matter what you have to filter out those frequencies, you're gonna do damage to the voice call. It doesn't matter how good the speaker is, what speaker it is, if you have distortion, you will heat up the voice coil and in return, you're gonna damage or, or ruin the speaker or tweeter. So it's really important that if you're running off of a factory uh, radio or aftermarket radio and not using an amplifier, make sure you get a smaller tweeter that's gonna perform better with less power. Um, it's always a good idea when you're upgrading to large tweeters like this to make sure that you use an amplifier. I mean, that's the best scenario. So a lot of people shopping you know, for tweeters like this are also gonna need a speaker to go with it. So most commonly used, especially when you're using a two-channel crossover, is a mid-range speaker. So a mid-range speaker does not have a tweeter. It's gonna play uh, the mid to uh, maybe a little bit lower frequencies. It's not gonna play the, the bass frequencies that a subwoofer does, but usually from about 100 hertz, maybe 200 hertz, depending on the size of the speaker, on up to 10 to 15,000 hertz in some situations. Uh, but it, this again is designed to play those certain frequencies. So it's really important to filter the other frequencies out as best as possible. So using a two channel crossover like this to do so is, is a great solution. Also, most people when running a, a setup like this are gonna be using an amplifier. So on the amplifier, there's also gonna be adjustments. There's gonna be a high pass crossover, low pass crossovers, um, and it's important to be educated on how to use those. So if the speaker has a low end of 100 hertz and it's 125 watts RMS, it's basically saying that anything over 100 hertz at 125 watts RMS, it's gonna play without damaging the speaker. But one thing, depending on the, the amount of power that you're putting towards the speaker, it's always best if the low end of the speaker is say 100 hertz, I always like to go maybe 150, maybe 200 hertz, because that's gonna really prevent uh, the speaker from getting the full amount of power at its lowest frequencies, which is typically right on the edge of what the speaker can handle. So if you set the, the, the frequency higher, you have less chance of damaging the speaker if you're running the full uh, amount of power that the speaker will handle. A combination like a mid-range and a tweeter like this is gonna be very loud, much louder than your traditional coaxial, but it's you really have to know how to set the amplifier, what other accessories and equipment that uh, is important to make them perform like they should. If you ever are, are curious or not sure, don't hesitate to email us and ask us before your purchase. We'd be more than happy to help you out and make sure you purchase exactly what you need and make sure it's set up, you know, as best as it possibly can. We always recommend professional installation. Moving on from that, you know, most people, you know, might not be using a mid-range and a tweeter. Um, they're gonna be using a standard coaxial, which is typically what you're gonna see and it is what is traditionally most common um, in a car audio application, especially if you're not, you know, trying to be crazy loud and also space and room is an issue. So this is a, a four by six, so a smaller coaxial speaker, but what you're gonna see here um, is the tweeter is built into the center of the, the, the speaker or what you wanna call the woofer uh, part of the speaker. Uh, this is gonna have basically everything built together in one. Um, it also, on this particular one on the back has the crossover uh, built into the speaker. So this is designed to you know, basically hook up to your factory radio, um, you know, aftermarket amplifier, you know, depending on the power, these aren't designed to handle as much power as the mid-range and tweeter that we were talking about. Um, but for the most part, um, 
they're designed to throw in and, and really get you the good sound that you want without a whole bunch of modification. So it, it's a great option, but you still got to understand that when that radio gets to the, the top end of the volume, uh, it can still distort, it can still do damage. Same thing if you have an amplifier, if it's not adjusted correctly uh, to the correct frequency response of the, the speaker, which the speaker should always be labeled on the box um, and, and tell you what frequencies that it's able to play. Um, if that's not adjusted properly, you can you know blow anything even with you know less power than it can handle. So one more thing I want to touch base on is the gain and bass boost of an amplifier. A lot of people think the gain is the farther you turn it up, the louder your system gets. Uh, has nothing to do with the you know anything else. That's not true. The gain on an amplifier is designed to be adjustable so you can match the output voltage of the head unit to the amplifier to produce the most amount of power without distortion. A lot of times also people will try to use the bass boost. The bass boost is something that you want to use very sparingly. It's, it's only good in certain applications. In most applications it's just going to cause you more harm uh, than it is good. But if you have a factory radio and it doesn't put out the, enough signal on certain frequency notes that you like, uh, you know, especially when it comes to bass frequencies, you can turn that uh, bass boost up and it'll increase those certain frequencies to give you more bass um, that the, the factory radio might not be producing. If you have an aftermarket radio, in most cases the voltage output and everything is high enough to where you never need to touch the bass boost. So unless you can't get the system to perform how you think it should uh, with just using the gain, um, you know I wouldn't touch the, the bass boost. Sorry for uh, such a long video. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I touched base on all this. Um, it's a very you know frequently you know these are very frequently asked questions. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video, maybe learned a little bit. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.